It is estimated that around 108 billion people have lived throughout the whole of history. That means that around 6.5% of everyone that's ever lived are alive today. And this is how many people are alive on planet Earth right now. The world population clock. A live counter that shows, on average, every birth and every death around the globe calculating the difference to give this single and seemingly unstoppable number. Population grows when the number of births is greater than the number of deaths. Far from one born every minute, it's actually something more like 250 every minute, or about four every second. And with only 108 deaths per minute, it all adds up to a growth rate of about 1% per year. It might not sound like much, but experts estimate that by 2050, there could be 10 billion of us. But it hasn't always been this way. It took around 200,000 years for us Homo sapiens to go from zero to one billion, which is roughly what the world population was in the 1800s. Then in just 200 years, that figure skyrocketed to what it is today, over seven billion. So what happened? Well, the Industrial Revolution happened. Machines that paved the way for modern farming techniques allowed farm foods to be produced on an unprecedented scale, making food more affordable and allowing families to grow. Medical advances also had a huge impact, keeping people alive for longer. In fact, the main reason for overpopulation today isn't because too many of us are being born, but not enough of us are dying. So what do we do with all these extra people? Well, the problem isn't the physical space they take up. Standing side by side, the entire world's population would fit into 500 square miles, which is less than the size of Los Angeles. The real issue is with all the things that many people consume, food, water, and the Earth's natural resources. And right now we're facing a crisis of overpopulation, where the sheer bulk of humans on the planet outstrips its carrying capacity. That carrying capacity, defining the maximum number of people that the Earth can support, is a fixed thing, but we're not exactly sure what it is. Some estimations imply that we're already exceeding it, overconsuming Earth's resources by up to 50% each year. An overpopulated world will see water, fuels, and living space run short while pollution increases and natural environments are destroyed. So what can we do? Could we control our overpopulation problem? For the time being, we could limit some of the effects by encouraging urbanization. Packing people into vertical cities not only makes the most of space and local resources, but also reduces the environmental impacts. In 1800, only 3% of the world's population lived in cities, Today, nearly 50% of the Earth's 7.5 billion people live in urban areas. And some of the densest, like Dakar, have more than 44,000 people in a single square kilometre. But being packed in like sardines doesn't do wonders for quality of life. And it's going to take some pretty serious urban planning to handle. Plus, metropolises are really only a short-term compromise, putting off the inevitable for a few busy, dirty decades. To really address overpopulation, we need to stop making new people, to slow the rate of increase or even stop the increase altogether. <laughs> well, it might be a good idea to start with these. Worldwide, nearly 40% of pregnancies are unintended, which is nearly 80 million each year. So by making male and female condoms, intrauterine devices and pills cheap and readily available to all, you stand a chance of significantly reducing that birth rate. Many governments are opting for a simple education program to inform people about the overpopulation problem and its effects. However, I'm not convinced that the future peril of fossil fuels is foremost in people's minds when they're getting jiggy with it. So maybe more extreme solutions are needed. If people can't control their loins themselves, perhaps it's better if the government controls them instead. India and China certainly thought so in the 1970s. Indian officials started a forced sterilization program in 1976, 
but the brute force approach prompted massive public outcry, and family planning pretty much went out the window thereafter. China's one-child policy lasted a lot longer, and was only formally phased out in 2015. The fertility rate in China is now just 1.4 children per woman, but there's some question about whether these measures violated basic human and reproductive rights. Turns out people don't like governments interfering in the bedroom department. <laughs> However, limiting the number of people being born has its own problems too. Currently, about 52% of the world's population is under 30 years old. Start decreasing this number and we chip away at our most able workforce and end up with way too many old dependents. Like a tower of cards with its top bigger than its bottom, it's doomed for failure. The solution often seized in dystopian science fiction is to remove that older generation altogether. Euthanasia, assisted suicide, ascension, however nicely you dress it up, it's fundamentally about killing people to free up resources. And unsurprisingly, it's fraught with ethical dilemmas. The opportunity for people to take advantage of others, the devaluing of life itself, and the potential for discrimination are all fairly hefty arguments against. Despite this, recent polls are indicating that large majorities of people are in favour of dying with dignity. A nationwide poll in Australia of over a thousand people found that 71% of them supported the legalisation of voluntary euthanasia. However, death is final after all, and it will take a big change in our culture to make it routine. A much more palatable and yet maybe not yet practical option is to ship all our extra population off somewhere else in the solar system. Please select your new home. The asteroid belt, Mars, the moon or even orbiting space stations could house our tired, poor, huddled masses of interplanetary immigrants. Sounds great. But if pretty much all space-based science fiction tales are to be believed, then the expansion of humankind across the cosmos due to overpopulation on Earth is inevitable. And if that doesn't float your boat, then you could always just take a lead from Matt Damon and downsize. So what would you do to solve the overpopulation problem? Let me know in the comments below, give us a like and subscribe, and explore more future science videos here with me on BBC Earth Lab. Oh, and don't forget to keep an eye out for new science originals here every week.